Well, sustainability as far as buildings is concerned, that is what was discussed this evening. We're talking about reducing energy, water, and recycling waste. That is what we believe in, sustainability. Because buildings take up 40% of the world's energy, and in India it's about 30%. And India is going to have a major problem with water, which is going to be bigger than the problem with uh, energy. And hence, we have to be much more careful about water than energy, in fact. Well, as I said, we all need to learn with less water to begin with. Currently, we use about, we have about 1.2 meters of rainfall average over India each year and there is sufficient water for most people. But in the next 30 years, we're going to be 40-50% water starved in the sense that we will have shortages of water. And when you heard about this uh, Himalayan glaciers drying up by 2035, and uh, we had only 25 years uh, for this drying up, and that was sort of proved wrong, and now we know it's going to dry up in 2305. So we have really gained 295 years, but the fact that the water is going to dry up has not changed. Only we have gained time. And hence, we have to be prepared like Israel or like countries which do not have enough water to be able to live with that less quantity of water. When you talk about general sustainability, uh, let me say this, that we made our mistakes in agriculture to begin with where, for example, when the farmers were close to a canal, right. uh, they had water which was coming from the canal. These farmers went and told the politicians that uh, they had an unfair advantage over the people who were far away from the canal. And hence, of course, the smart politician, and along with the technical people, found a way out, saying that dig wells right. and have tube wells. And this, the water level was maybe 10 feet or 3 meters or five meters to begin with, and this has started now receding, and now you have uh, water tables going down to 50 meters, 60 meters, 80 meters, and the pump sizes have increased from, say, the two horsepower pump to 20 horsepower, 30 horsepower pump, and we have become more energy intensive in terms of our farming because of pumping water from the ground. And similarly, in cities, every home practically has a tube well, and everybody learned how to make a tube well and start pumping water, which was free of cost and still is free of cost. And now only there are restrictions for drilling tube wells, and people know how to go around those restrictions and still drill the tube wells. So we need to charge correctly for our water. We need to have the right policies for water. And water, if you ask people in Delhi, if I ask the meeting today, the people in the meeting, can anybody name me the price of water in MCD or NDMC area? Nobody would have been able to uh, tell the price. And given the fact that if you do not know the price of water, it means you don't care about it. So the question is, we have to get our water policies right, our pricing right, we have to make sure that the groundwater is charged for, and people realize that water is a precious resource, which we are not realizing today. But sustainability for companies has to be not a CSR activity, but a core activity. Companies realize sustainability when they know that they are making money. Companies are by and large driven by greed. And there is some degree of social responsibility, but the basic driver is greed. And hence, it has to be very profitable for companies to be able to do things or sustainable efforts. For example, in buildings, to have today a USGBC lead platinum of, or IGBC lead platinum building really does not cost too much more, maybe one or two percent more, maybe the same cost as a normal building. But people don't understand this. People don't know that it is true that a sustainable building does not cost more than a normal building. But what the builders understand is that if you put gold-plated fittings and Italian marble, that's what sells. So they don't, the people don't understand uh, what sustainability can do for them, so they do not know. And once they know and they ask for it, then the builders and the owners will have to build for the sustainable market as such. 
and I think that's the way we need public awareness, we need organizations like this uh, to spread this message across the people as to what the sustainable effort means to them. And India, by and large, has had a DNA of sustainability right from the beginning. And as we see the Taj Mahal water cooled by the Jamuna River, and that's the mask which is cooled by the river because the river was flowing next to the, uh, the Taj Mahal. You had buildings which were sustainable with courtyards, with chabutras, with jalis and so on and so forth. So we are now in a modern way, we have to again get back to understanding what we need to do rather than just building glass facades and uh, sort of buildings and glass and steel which we should have, re which we really should build in Iceland and in cold climates rather than in hot climates like India. I, I think it's an excellent program which really serves a need in terms of creating awareness of what people can achieve, what people can do. At least in my own session, I said, tell the people what you have really, what you have really achieved. Because there's no point in preaching. You say, this is what I did. And what's the takeaway from that? The person who's come to hear you goes out and says, why am I not doing it? Why is somebody else benefiting from it? Why have I not benefited from it? And then there is the desire to learn. It cannot be something which is imposed. We are a democracy. Nobody can tell us what to do. Uh, nobody can preach us what to do. It has to come from within. And I think that is what you're doing, and you're doing a good job.